the world. I'm Robin Catling, and this is Right On. Join me in my author journey as I delve into the craft of writing with tools, tips, and lessons learned the hard way so you don't have to. More scenes in each chapter. Working through a reverse outline of book one, I'm breaking down the action of the novel as part of the story edit. The revelation of this exercise is there are more scenes in each chapter than I thought. But you're the author, that doesn't make sense. Making a scene. Let's use the definition of a scene from Masterclass. The definition of a scene, as it pertains to prose fiction, is a section of the overall story that contains its own unique combination of setting, character, dialogue, and sphere of activity. Chapters usually consist of a number of scenes. Some action, a dialogue, a time jump, a change of location, the entry or exit of characters, or some introspection can all mark the beginning or end of scenes within a chapter. My manuscript is marked with significant scene breaks within chapters, usually where there's a time jump of a few hours, with or without a change in location. The short chapters in book one generally consist of one or two scenes, occasionally three. But when you look at the content of those scenes, there are clearly more scenes in each chapter than I have marked. Many of the scene breaks are obvious in my travelogue fantasy adventure. End of a dialogue, saddle up and move on. Next incident. However. Scenes as mini-stories. We also need to remember scene structure in fiction, or Mary Robinette's fractal structure in fiction. Each scene needs to have a mini-story arc within it, and a set of essential elements in order to make a satisfying contribution to the overall story. My second iteration of a reverse outline breaks down each chapter scene by scene. I'm mapping each scene using a simplified set of story elements derived from those two previous posts. A hook with an inciting incident, a middle, including turning points, a conflict, with crisis and perhaps more turning points, and a resolution, coming after a climax. Those four elements got me looking into each marked scene to find many of them consist of multiple scenes. That doesn't mean what I've marked is wrong from the reader's point of view, it's just not the lowest level of decomposition needed to properly edit my story. Each scene should have a hook or inciting incident. What the heck has gone wrong this time? There's usually some business around fixing or resolving it. This is our scene middle. There's usually some turning points in there, demanding or resulting from a decision a character makes. Catch the recent post on troubles, decisions and consequences. The scene middle contains or builds to the conflict, leading to the crisis, the key decision and resolution of the scene. You should expect some consequences soon or sometime down the road. Them's the breaks. Taking some of my longer chapters or longer scenes, I find multiple scene breaks within them. For instance, in my monster plot outlining spreadsheet, chapter 17, Settlement, has two scenes. At four and a half thousand words, and only one scene break at 500 words, I should have guessed there's more than two scenes in that. This is what you get from discovery writing whole chunks of chapters. I recently inserted one short scene to add some conflict, tension and depth to the world building. That's three scenes. There's another short scene featuring a missionary that adds character depth with some more world building. It was never marked, so that's four. The climax of the chapter occurs in a major dialogue scene, which becomes scene five. In my reverse outline, it's noted like this. 17.5. Marto arrives. The hook. Marto finds Vala and Joe in the settlement. The middle. False cheer. False stories. And no coincidence. The conflict. Marto's hidden motives. Vala and Joe's suspicions. The resolution. Walk away. It's a trap. This one is easy to summarise, as the conflict is all on the surface. Other scenes are less obvious, which makes the task all the more important for the edit. Crucially, I have a better understanding of the structure of chapter 17. There's a lot going on. Outcomes of the reverse outline. 
If I do the job properly, I can answer whether each of the scenes satisfactorily contains all the microelements to tell a self-contained story. So that's a hook with an incident, turning point, conflict with crisis, decision and resolution. Do the scenes make a contribution to the overall story or add value? Are there any loose ends to tidy up in plot, character or structure? Are we foreshadowing for later? And is this used down the road? Have we missed any details we might need to complete the reader's understanding? And have we included unnecessary detail, characters or incidents? Some of those questions around value and contribution are subjective. How much do we need to add? How much can we afford to cut? Can we lose whole scenes without damage? Again, those subjective questions have subjective answers. I should probably expand the scene summaries to detail multiple turning points, multiple crises, layers of conflict and resolutions. But at this stage, a basic reverse outline is a vital check on the overall shape of the novel. When I transfer this back to my giant 38 elements of story spreadsheet, scene goals and character arc elements such as revelations, changes or lessons need to go in. It's a lot of work and there's no substitute for doing the job well. That's all for this time. Thanks for stopping by. You can like and subscribe to the channel or go to robincatling.info to check out the blog.